hi friends in this video I am going to introduce you with some basics of assembler and uh, this will be very handy for you while you do your reverse engineering and uh, I strongly recommend you to please learn the basics before you actually get into the reversing so if you are a newbie this video is for you and uh, in, at the end of this video you will be able to get your hands dirty with uh, reverse engineering and uh, do some basic reverse engineering stuff so the basic things bit you all know uh, it's a smallest piece of data which can be represented inside a computer and it can be either 0 or 1 byte it is 8 bits of data packed together that means we have a byte which consists of 8 bits another word word is simply 2 bytes that means 16 bits double word as the name says double word 2 words that means 32 bits or 4 bytes and we then we have kilobyte and megabyte when kilobyte is not thousand bytes but it is actually 2 key power 10 that means 1024 bytes and so on we have megabyte 2 key power 20 bytes or 1024 into 1024 bytes then we have gigabyte and so on now coming to registers we have uh, actually a lot of registers there but uh, the very common ones are these which are listed here and these registers are quite handy to be known because uh, you will encounter a lot of instructions which uses these registers so the very first register is EAX and uh, in 32 bit or 64 bit uh, computer systems which are uh, there this register is uh, 32 bits long and uh, previously for 8086 uh, the register was 16 bits and uh, it was only AX but now because it is extended to 30 bit 32 bit it is called EAX or extended accumulator register and what this register does is simply performs arithmetic operations and uh, helps in performing ap arithmetic operations and this is the register which is mostly used then we have EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, EDI, EBP, ESP and EIP and we will discuss each of them one by one so second register is EBP and what it refers to extended base pointer so base pointer is simply used to store addresses just like uh, you store addresses in pointer in high level languages in low level languages uh, EBP is used for storing pointers next is ESP and this stores the this points at the top of the stack we have something called stack in low level languages which is used for uh, storing variable data which are whenever we call a function the arguments which are passed to the function are locally stored on the stack and whenever the function exits the stack is cleared so that's the basic of how stack or stack frame works next thing is instruction pointer and as the name says it points to a particular instruction and we have EDX which is used for storing data we have EBP this points to the base of the stack pointer and uh, if you don't know 
what EBP and ESP is I will explain these two in a bit of moments so EAX is uh, for accumulator and that is used for performing arithmetic operations EBX is a base pointer which is used for storing mostly addresses ECX is used to store counters that means uh, in a high level language we use uh, counters for storing loop variables like we want to loop for i equal to 0 to i equal to 10 then the loop counter is i and uh, in the low level languages ECX is used to store counter variables EDX is stored to store data ESI is to point to the source index that means the memory address from where the processor has to fetch the data and uh, EDI refers to a memory address where the processor writes the data that means ESI is used to read the data and EDI is used to write the data at particular or from particular memory address so it will read data from the particular address specified from this ESI pointer so if a processor needs to read data from a location the location is stored in ESI and if it wants to write data to a location then the location is stored in EDI and these two we will cover in a bit EIP is a instruction pointer and it simply points to the memory location where the instruction which is going to be executed is stored that means the current instruction which is going to be executed and the lower part of EAX is called AX that means we have a 32 bit register and the higher 32 bits the higher 16 bits and the lower 16 bits so we have 32 bits in out of those 32 bits the least significant 16 bits are uh, termed as AX and uh, out of those 16 bit the higher 8 bits are called AH and the lower 8 bits are called AL and this is just the notation of representing it and we cannot actually just access the mm, lower 16 bits or this AH or AL independently if we want to access these bits we need to access we need to access the whole register and these are just notations to help us doing quick tasks now byte size registers byte size registers are simply registers which are having size equal to a byte and as I discussed earlier AL and AH these are accumulators this is accumulators starting 8 bits from least significant bit to most significant bit that means if we have a 32 bit uh, accumulator then uh, we, st we start with the least bit and then goes to 8 bits which is AL and then from the 9th bit we go up to the 16th bit that this is AH so these are just the notations we use next is word size registers which is I just told you AX BX that means the least significant 16 bits of a register 32 bit register double word size registers these are EAX EBX all of them having 32 bit size now 
we have something called flex and flex are generally used to tell the processor about the results or outcomes of the previously performed task for example if you make a subtraction of uh, some variable from another variable we are actually going to discuss only three flags z o and c but there are all there are actually many other flags but uh, these are not frequently used and uh, for beginners uh, it is sufficient to have knowledge of only these three flags so the very first flag is Z flag and Z refers to zero flag. That means the zero flag is set when the outcome of previous instruction is zero. And uh, this implies in cases like where we compare two variables. Let's say we do a instruction compare EAX with EBX. So when the compare instruction is performed, it returns a value which is either zero or non-zero. So if it returns zero, that means the two the two operands which we have given to compare are equal. So if EAX and EBX are two registers which are equal, then we come we perform compare EAX EBX and it will set the zero flag that means those two are equal next is overflow flag and overflow flag is uh, set when the EAX overflows that means if you perform any operation which overflows the EAX or mix the value of EAX higher than what it can store that means if EAX has value this and if we perform add operation to it then it will overflow the EAX and in that case to make the processor aware of it we set the O flag next is carry flag and carry flag is set whenever a carry is generated now there is judgments and offsets so this is actually the way the memory locations are accessed by the processor so we have a judgment and we have a offset the segment is used to define a specific segment in the memory from which the data is need to be accessed and the offset is the specific location inside that segment from the from which the data is needed to be executed think of it as a book and as a specific page so you have a you are in a library so think of memory as a library in that library we we have a lot of books and uh, judgment this is used to point to a specific book which we are interested in offset it is it you can think of it as a page and uh, it points to a page in a book which we are exactly interested in so this points to a segment in memory and this point to a specific location inside that segment
coming to stack so we left with two we left with two registers ebp and esp so i will cover those two registers here while discussing stack so what stack is stack is a data structure which is used by the processor to store all the local function is stored locally onto the stack and uh, when the function exits the data is cleared and uh, stack this is actually grows from high memory to low memory so initially when we launch a program or uh, start execution of a program a specific address memory map is assigned to that program and uh, the highest address of uh, the memory assigned to the program is uh, what the base of stack that means if you have been assigned uh, a memory then the stack pointer grows up initially both base pointer and uh, stack pointer points to the highest memory and uh, as the variables are defined inside the stack the the stack pointer decrements and decrements means uh, stack pointer grows so stack is like this high this is high memory this is low memory and so on so stack goes high to low memory and uh, stack pointer is decremented when we do the push operation and when we do the pop operation the stack is stack pointer is decremented and uh, you might be aware of uh, the push and pop operations in stack push is simply storing value into the stack and pop is simply storing removing value from the stack then we have some instructions to elaborate the very first one is add and its syntax is add destination and source what it will do is simply add these two values and store into the and will store into the destination second is and and it performs a logical and operation between two operands so we have a destination we have a source it will perform and operation and set up the flex accordingly so if the and operation produces all zero it will set up the zero flag now next instruction is call and what this instruction does is simply calls a function so if we do a call to something and this something is a function which we have defined so it will simply call the function and the execution of function will start and whenever we call a function the very first thing which happens is it pushes the memory address of next instruction to the stack and this is called return address whenever function is called the return address is pushed onto the stack so that when the function finishes the processor 
may resume its normal execution. Next instruction is CDQ and this instruction will do is uh, convert a D word value to a Q word value and as I said D word means double word and Q word means quad word so it will simply convert 4 bytes to 8 bytes and it will do it so by making by appending zeros to the value next is compare it will simply compare to operands and uh, based on the outcome of uh, whether they are uh, equal not equal or greater it will set up the corresponding flags next is decrement it is simply subtracting a value of 1 from the operand so it takes operand subtracts the value one from it next is division and uh, it simply takes one argument called divisor and uh, it will take this divisor from the operand and divide the eax the value stored in eax with this divisor and store the and it will take divisor from the operand divide eax with with this divisor and store the result in eax and the modulo value is stored in edx so whatever be the remainder is stored in edx and as you know edx is stored used for storing data that's why not in ecx or in ebx or in ecx Next is idiv and it refers to integer division and this is quite same as division but it works on sign division. That means this multi this divides signed values rather than unsigned values. Similar is imul and it is referred to integer multiplication and is used for the multiplication of integer signed integer values increment this simply does is increments the value by one so if we use it like this increment some register it will increment the value of register by one int this int refers to interrupt and what it does is simply call uh, interrupt and what an interrupt is you can think of it as a function in high level but it is not actually a function but the way it performs the functionality is a lot similar so for now just think of it as a function next is jump and jump is uh, used a lot of times and uh, is uh, very helpful to know about these and what it does is it takes you from one memory location to another memory location based on the outcome of several conditions so if we do compare of two operands and uh, check whether they are equal or not or uh, whether one is greater than another or smaller than another then we may write for those things so we have j a and uh, this is star this is just marked to make you realize that this is important and it is used a lot of times and the double star it is used to make you aware that uh, it is very very important and 
those with which are not marked as star or double star are really used so this star is ne not actually the part of the code but i have just marked them to have you so i just marked them to let you know which are important ones and which you should focus on so this is ja a refers to above so what it will do is simply check if if jump if above that means jump if first operand is greater than the second operand or above second operand in hex values then we have jb which is below we have g jump greater jump great equal to jump equal to and so on next instruction is load effective address and uh, what it will do is simply load the effective address that means we have two operands and uh, we want to load the effective address of this source into the destination then we use it this way but it is not used for uh, its original purpose and uh, nowadays even the registers which we described earlier those are not used for the purposes for which they are defined so nowadays we can use any register for any purpose without any without any address and it is used generally for doing multiplications like we want to perform a multiplication and store it into EAX so we want to do 4 into ECX plus EBX and uh, load the result to EAX so we do it in this way so generally this is now used for multiplication rather than loading the addresses move it is the command which you will see everywhere while doing reversing and this simply does is takes the source value and uh, copies and uh, adds this value to the destination that means move destination source is equal to destination equal destination plus source so it will take this value and add this value to destination it will take source and add this value to destination and then we have knob and this is also one of the key thing to very helpful actually it is for us to know of it and that is because while performing reversing we actually come across a lot of uh, code pieces where we want to make things like for example we have a jump which uh, passes through a particular block of code which we want to execute so we just change it to knob and what it does is simply no operation and if you don't get it you will get it when you will do the reverse engineering and you will encounter definitely encounter the situations where you ne need to do or you need to use this knob and uh, the hexadecimal value belonging to it is 90 and uh, in the river and in the disassemblies you will see it a lot of time this is or it simply does the or operation between two operands pop pop is a pop is a function which performs pop instruction performs is uh, takes the value out of the stack and stores it in the destination so whatever be at the top of the stack 
it will be popped out and uh, stored into this value and it will also decrement the stack pointer so that it pointed so that it points to the value which is which was previously at the second of the stack now the first value is popped up and uh, the stack pointer points to the second value from the top push push is a simple operation which uh, stores value onto the stack so we give it a operand and this operand is this operand is stored onto the stack next we have a return and what it does is simply returns from the function so we call a function and uh, when the function execution is completed we use this return query and the most common way to use it like this just type in rat and what it will do is it will take the value at the top of the stack which is the return address and store it into the instruction pointer if you remember i told you when we call a function the return address is first pushed onto the stack and whenever this return return instruction whenever this return instruction is encountered this takes that that address which we stored on the stack and uh, stores it into the instruction pointer so that the processor may resume its normal execution now sub it performs subtraction and uh, how it performs is it to uh, subtract source from destination that means it is equal to sub dest source is equal to destination equal to destination minus source test test is used to test several conditions between two operands and based on the outcome it sets the auxiliary carry carry zero and overflow flags and it's a bit complex it's a bit complex instruction to elaborate in this video so i'm just giving you a brief next is xor and what it does is performs a exclusive or operation between two operands and uh, the way xor works is it takes two values and if these two are same it will produce zero and if two these two are uh, not same it will be one that means if we perform xor of one and one it will be zero and if we perform xor of zero and zero then it will also be zero but in other two cases it will be one and if we see the table here of xor we see if we perform xor operation of 1 and 1 then it is 0 if we perform xor operation of 0 and 0 then it is 0 so whenever the bits are same the xor operation is 0 and if the bits are different it the xor operation produces 1 so that's it for this video i hope you like it and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel admiral ghost and leave your feedback in the comment box